All right, and you're tuned in to another episode of me designing teeth. So let's just go right into this. We've set our parameters. Um, usually with the anteriors, when I'm using Emacs, I'll set the I'll set the minimal radial thickness and minimal uh, occlusal thickness to 500 each. I don't play with any of the other parameters when doing uh, anteriors. Only thing I would adjust otherwise, if it were a posterior, is dynamic contact and occlusal contact. But we're good to go. Uh, <clears throat> Amazing. These, uh, where these are positioned, it's just. It's amazing what the software did. Uh, this is the first time I'm seeing this, and I'm happy with that. So uh, we do have this cuspid overlap right here, but we'll work with it. Um, nothing you can really do about it. It's you just have to work around it. Uh, the morphology, I think we're going to leave it on biogeneric. Just mm, because the biogeneric variation on the InLab 18 is funky compared to how it was before with the older softwares. Um, maybe not so much with the laterals. It just it gives you weird proposals with the centrals, in my opinion. Uh, so let's just play around with the database, the tooth database, and see what we can find. Uh, Go to Mertz. I always check this one out first. Uh, and this is a woman, Debbie, so you don't really want masculine, uh, worn down teeth on a woman, a cosmetic case especially. Uh, if you're going for something more natural, then this would be a little more appropriate, especially on a male. But uh, the teeth with. Uh, the teeth have different characteristics between male and female. Uh, female usually has um, more curvature, more contour, uh, and it's just typically a little less worn. Embrasures are slightly more open with uh, female morphology of the teeth. So, not a fan of those. Uh, I don't think I'll ever use those. Uh, and this isn't necessarily what we're going for either, so let's just try a few things out. If we can't find anything, we'll just go with imaginary variation and customize it from scratch, in a sense. Like that. I've never used it. Now I don't. Change my mind. But uh, if you guys, anyone who's watching this, if you have a morphology that you're a fan of, something that's pretty much your go-to, uh, let me know. I'm interested in what you guys are using. Personally, only time I'm really using this tool is when I know uh, it's a male patient and... Uh, there's significant wear on the teeth. I'll either go with this uh, IT or BI, usually BI, and you get some pretty good results with that. And you don't just use that; you uh, customize it as well. But let's just when well, we can try this. This isn't bad. This isn't bad.
All right, let's see the magic. First thing I like to do is biogeneric variation on whichever teeth we're going to be doing that on. Four directional, we're going to bring over the uh, mesial and sizal edge. That's good. So we've got the contour lines pretty much squared away with the shape tool, how we want them. Um, we'll leave this rounded. Why not? We're going to do the same thing over here. Pretty much the same thing. You could see with that light where the contour line is, where it's established. I'm happy with that. Um, then we'll go over to two directional. I'm gonna grab this. And what we're doing with the two directional tool when we look at the tooth from this angle is we're adjusting the contour line to give it a natural emergence profile and that's what we just did um, see if you leave it rounded out that just doesn't look right and it's very subtle everything's subtle but it's those minor things that really bring a case to life and give it that natural appearance so as you can see when we looked at it from that angle we had this rounded off incisal edge and we used the four directional shape tool to sharpen that up <coughs> forgot to do that over here from that angle and that's done that is a done deal those laterals um, after after uh, we finish up the rest of the teeth we're just gonna smooth everything out and we'll be good to go And after biogeneric variation, um, sometimes you can get weird proposals uh, moving it after you get your proposal. That's a great way to recalculate it and get something better out of the system. And as you can see, that's what we've done here. Uh, I don't know if you remember where this tooth started out, the shape of it but I think it looks better for sure looked more like this and we're gonna try and accomplish the same thing with this and usually when you're designing these uh, the cervical or 
upper portion of the crown, top third, you want that coming out slightly. You get to the body, third of the crown, third portion of the crown, middle portion of the crown, uh, you're going to want that going straight down. And then you want a slight taper inward uh, in the bottom third. And that's common in the natural shape of teeth. So that's sort of a rule I follow when I'm uh, outlining these contour lines and making sure that everything's good. So as you can see with my circular tool, I made the size of it about a third in length of the crown. Then bring that out. And then bring this, let that meet. Let the middle portion be like a bridge between that cervic cervical or upper portion of the crown and the incisal portion of the crown. And then down here, bring it in slightly. And that's just a good rule to follow. It usually ends up looking just straight up and down, and that's okay. Um, and then if you look at the contour line from this angle, this mesial contour line, you'll notice this lump down in the middle. You want to leave that straight. You want to leave it dainty. Um, it's a great way to make the tooth look more natural. Okay, we're going to do the same thing over here that we did with the laterals. We're going to sharpen up this embrasure. And the curve of this lateral, what we're trying to accomplish, it, accomplish is matching the curve of this central down here. Dude, cucumber on sandwiches is the best, huh? Mm. So good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Totally. Another helpful tip, uh, these contour lines. Um, I don't know if you can see my cursor in this video. I hope you can. Um, but we're trying to match uh, this contour line with this contour line. But this mesial contour line of number, say, 9, you want that parallel with the mesial contour line of number 10. And you want the mesial contour line of number 10 parallel with tooth number 11, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's just, it, it gives the teeth a more symmetric look. Sharpen that up from this angle. Well, we're cooking good looking.
There we go. Look at it from this angle. And what we're checking for is a nice arch. We've got that. We're also looking at the embrasures, the shape of the embrasures. See, this one can be sharpened up just slightly, brought in a little bit. Um, and then we're using the shadows too to determine where things are over contoured, under contoured. This is slightly under contoured right here. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to bring it out a little bit. And then we're also able to compare the uh, way that the contour line. Uh, emerges from the tissue from this angle. That's good. That's, that's, it's good. Okay, and one last little final touch before we smooth it out is incisal variation. This just adds a little bit extra. Um, with the laterals, I like number three. It brings the whole tooth back, and you can see it when with the dramatic strength. Uh, right here, it's a little lower on the incisal, which I actually kind of like it on this case. And then right here, it goes a little bit even lower. Uh, let's try all those out at a... Uh, around let's put it there there one two three three you can hardly tell the difference um, you can look at it from this angle and get a better idea two one two three brings the whole thing back two one which one would you go with? I'm going to go with one on this one. Um, shape, individual. And just, it, it can leave some dramatic indentations on the crown. So I just want to bring that out slightly. And it's a nice little touch to our crown. Mamelons, mamelmanum. Anyways, uh, I, it gives it a nice effect for those those puppies. Um, this thigh roll, we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, maybe not the same strength. We're gonna take this one individually. So, oops. <clears throat> Let's go right here. And because this one's so much longer, we may want to go with. Well, we're going to stick with one. Uh, we were at around 15, I think it was. Just about 14. Uh, and same thing, shape tool. Bring it out just slightly. And if you look at it from this angle, you'll see all the same. Uh, I, I like that from that angle. There we go. 
one little, little thing. That would only drive someone like me nuts. Okay. Centrals. Sizal variation. Let's go right there. <clears throat> there's one, there's two, there's three. I like two. Let's see, with a little less intensity. We could just stop there. Call that a wrap. It flattens it out a little bit, which is nice. Uh, apply. We'll go to tooth number eight. Uh, we we're at about 12. Number two. And that's good. And we're going to bring this one out just for the this area of concern. And if anything, rather than leaving that flat and adding that slight little bump that we're doing for the thickness, I'm going to, that's as far as I'm going to go. Um, it's giving it some more asymmetry. It's giving it some surface texture that uh, you otherwise wouldn't have if they were just flat. So that's good. Centrals, laterals, completely done, except for minor things. Okay, so now what we'll do, we'll go in individually with the smooth tool, uh, take away the lower, take away the upper, completely expose the crown. Now we're just going to get all the, get the margins and refine the contour lines. And we'll throw in the contacts while we're here. Get the margins. And... While we're here on the contacts, one thing I do, if you look at it straight on, you can see that there's, uh, it's a little convex. And what we're trying to do is make that flat. So just smooth out on the red until it's somewhat flat. And when it is flat, it stops smoothing out or it slows down significantly. So, um, that's good for now. We can always make more adjustments on the other teeth. Gonna flatten this surface out. And by flattening it out, you're gonna make it easier for you to draw the crown on and off, especially when it's adjacent to other crowns. So that's flat, that's flat. We're good to go on that. Um, and by refine the contour line, I mean finding that glare on it and then just smoothing it right along that glare. And we're going to do the same thing here. Find the glare. Smooth it out along the glare. And then from this view. And after doing this, you can distort it a little bit. So then you'll go back in with the shape tool. And we're not reshaping anything. We're just restoring the contour line where it may have been smoothed out a little too much. But that's gonna, oh, that's great. That's honestly amazing. Uh, back to smooth. You can tell this isn't flat. Flat. 
and that's taking care of that contact, just flattening them out. Um, margins, margins. And go up and down with the smooth tool right right in this region you don't want to go side to side up and down because we're trying to make a smooth transition from the emergence profile to the rest of the crown come over here find that glare you can see that's about where it's at oh, right there Okay, now with something like this where you're getting a lot of interference, um, rather than using the circular tool to take away that contact, which would reshape the entire tooth, we're going to use the remove tool, which would give it a more of a natural wear, natural appearance of uh, wear. So we're going to get this sized up, right? Uh, take away some of the strength because you don't want to go at it too hard and then start start removing
This case is done.